you were right. But did you know how right you were, Michael Holly? You see this Jeff Pass mm -hmm. story from the New York Times last night? Oh my goodness. Goodness, Mike. Uh, Jeff Pash, top lawyer, in the NFL, great relationship with Bruce Allen. And I know uh, of the, the former president of the Washington football team. They are in conversation many times about a number of league issues, including one that was really, really problematic where the Washington football team was supposed to be fine, Mike and Charles Robinson, supposed to be fined $15,000. Bruce Allen uh, writes to Pash and protests. Pash says, don't worry, you ain't got no problems, Jules. We're all good. That has been rescinded. That was supposed to be out. We've got it taken care of. No explanation. So it's just like this, this little uh, cozy, as you put it, Mike, and that was uh, the right word, cozy relationship between the former president of the Washington football team and the top lawyer of the NFL, Charles Robinson. Uh, I feel like I feel like there's so much good stuff here. I feel like the real NFL is inside those 650,000 emails. Uh, start off, just tell us how you feel about uh, Jeff Pash and where he stands today. Well, um, the, I mean, <laughs> that relationship between Jeff Pash and Bruce Allen as you said, the fine being what appeared to be unilaterally, Jeff Pash just saying, We're, uh, don't worry about it, it's rescinded, um, is really crazy. Um, I think some of the remarks that they made about, um, you know, he made a joke about, you know, the drawing in Latino fans and what might be might not be so popular once the wall's built. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, I mean, they're just... I, I don't even know really how to describe here. Here's why I think this is even more troubling than, than John Gruden. Um, Jeff Pash is the league's lead lawyer. Okay. And he has mm -hmm. been for a long time. There are few positions in the NFL more powerful than the general counsel of the NFL. Okay. And because that is someone who touches Literally, he's he is the choke point between everything that happens with the league and then the teams and players. I mean, he is he is the tip of the sword legally for the NFL. That means investigations go through him. That means player fines, you know, end up going through him. That means negotiations with the union go through him. Um, he is he is Roger Goodell. Roger Goodell is Jeff Pash. I mean, Roger Goodell is the face. He's the guy that's out there. He can set the agenda. But ultimately, Jeff Pash is the lawyer who sifts out what can or can't happen. And to see this kind of a personal relationship with a team executive and the things that they spoke about. And he's a lawyer. And yet he puts this in his emails. Not only do I want to see the 650,000 emails, now I want to see the text messages. Because I'm going to tell you right now, yeah. in my experience, the text messages are always way worse than the emails. Okay, and in, in any Ooh, investigation, you know, you know. in any investigation Ooh. I've ever done, any investigation I've ever done, the texts are tenfold worse than what you will see in emails. That's when they so really, now, that's when they really let their guard down. Yeah, yep. <laughs> they, yeah, no, like, it is. That believe it or not, is. email they probably censor the emails. <laughs> but you know what, Charles? Though, man, like Mike, I think Mike be hit it on the head. The real NFL is in these emails. It felt like the, what we read in the New York Times. It was a window into their soul. And I'm not just talking about their political leanings or, or their or their beliefs. I'm talking about how they operate. It was like being a fly on the wall at a good yep. old boy network meeting. Yeah, because the part that was most troubling to me from a from a league operational standpoint was when Bruce Allen reportedly told Jeff Pash, hey, I got to hit you back. I'm busy trying to lower a contract for a player. And Jeff Lord's Pash work. responds, the Lord's work. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. like, you know what, man, don't miss me with anything about we're partners or we're in this together with the right. players. I'll say what I said when this Gruden thing it. first came out. Here's what they think about you. Okay. You're like, and so to me, even though this was not as uh, morally and societally offensive in terms of anti gay or racist, uh, you know, or sexist or misogynistic language or what have you. From a practical application standpoint, this was just as problematic, just as troubling, because all of it speaks to how business is done in the NFL among a, success, a, a select few power brokers, whether that's coaches, 
uh, giving opportunities or how they deal with players, i.e. John Gruden, or whether that's the, the league's top lawyer and how he deals with teams and the favoritism he shows to specific teams as opposed to the players who supposedly are partners in this NFL, NFL venture. I, I defy you to read those exchanges and not like in my mind, it, the the Johnny Cash language popped of you know riding in fine dining cars, smoking big cigars. Like this is <laughs> to me behind the scenes. You have the imagery of let's be honest here, white males in power broker positions who say things publicly, do things publicly, and then immediately hop on the private line to talk about how it's really going to go down. That's how it felt. When you read that, it feels like there's one set of, of information that comes out for public consumption and imagery, and then there's a whole subset of information that, that occurs privately um, between these same individuals. And all it does is lean into what a lot of people consider conspiracy theories about the, what gets, you know, who, who's on strings and what's happening behind the curtain. But now we're seeing it's maybe it's not a conspiracy theory. Maybe a lot of what happens behind the scenes gets cooked up. And I know people, it pisses people off when you bring up Colin Kaepernick, but anybody have sure. any doubt that there was more cooked up behind the scenes on that one? Now that well, we're starting. It. God, could you imagine I mean, what they really? said? That's why it's there. Could you imagine what they said? I'm telling Did, you. The exchange? Oh, my God. I'm telling you. Well, you said, can you imagine? Can, can I imagine what they said? I don't have to. If I can just get my hands on those emails, I'll know what they said. Yeah. It's all there. Yeah. I know yeah. it's all there. Look, hey, Je Jeffrey Pash, and believe me, I told you, I love this stuff. If those emails come out. I'm, I'm all in. I'm bought in. I'll do it. Hey, hey, I'm surgical with it. I'm surgical with it, Mike and Charles. I really am. I, I remember reading all of the Deflategate stuff, and Jeffrey Kessler, who was Tom Brady's Deflategate lawyer, when he went to the appeal, he was able to just un in a very small amount of time say, wait a minute. Didn't y'all say the Wells report was independent? Yeah, yeah. Ted mm -hmm. Wells, didn't you say that? Yeah. Jeffrey Pash, didn't you say that? Yeah. So who paid you to do who's paying you to be here today? And they had to admit that it's just all so it's this yeah. connection. So Jeffrey Pash Incestuous. and the Wells report, like there it's yeah. a whole, it's the secret network, man. It's and, the secret network, Charles. By the way, by the way, every single time anyone ever brings up Deflate Gate again, I'm just going to see that gif of Ron Swanson bashing his phone with a hammer and think Tom Brady was right. Like he absolutely was like, I'm not giving you guys anything because you're not going to give us anything. You're not getting any of my private stuff. I'm not giving you any of my records. I'm not giving you my phone to dig through. You're sure not giving us your phone to dig through, right? I mean, look, look at the lengths yeah. that they're going through right now. And by the way, whoever is leaking this stuff, and I, and I, I promise you, I have pressed every single, I've gone everywhere and asked every single person that I, I think could have any idea who was who leaking this stuff. And no one knows for sure who it is, but clearly someone has their hands on a, I think has their hands on all of it and is figuring out who do I want to frag? When do I want to frag them? And Go, I'll tell you it's what. It's fascinating. It's, it's I love that's it. a decade of now that we know, particularly that the lead lawyer was talking to Bruce Allen. I can't imagine who was talking to Dan Snyder. I can't imagine. But, and, and go through your mind. What other coaches ran through that organization? Sean McVay was in the organization. Kyle Shanahan, Mike Shanahan. I mean, go through, break down. Uh, it's that well, 650,000 emails might be the greatest thing in that's ever existed in terms of like calling one piece right. of information and, and lighting a fire. No, it's, it's like Raiders of the Lost Ark. Like it's just this lost treasure, a romance, a romance in the stone, or a jewel in the Nile, or something. Like somebody got to find this damn thing. It'll be me and Mike. Like right. it's like when they like we're lifting the emails, like they're lifting the Ark. <laughs> Raiders of the yeah, Lost pretty much. Ark. Yeah. <laughs> so, but look. You and I, thank you for uh, this. Is my second, my third, third time talking to you this week, Charles. Because you and I, you had me on uh, you pod to win the game, your amazing podcast. The other night, we had a great conversation. Do you remember when I said um, that I could not say who because I didn't see the emails myself, mm -hmm. but I knew that this stretched to the league office, and I knew I, I heard Jeff Pash that Jeff Pash was going to be ensnared in this situation. Remember, I said it on your podcast. Mm -hmm. So then, so mm -hmm. and, and below, here we are. I'm wondering. And again, same thing. You got to be responsible. You can't just, you know, throw somebody's name out there without any actual physical proof. But 
not just what you're imagining, but through your network of sources. Like, are you hearing that something else could be coming out because we were clamoring for more emails. Now we got Jeff Pash. Are you hearing that some and DeMar Smith is like, I want to know more because this influences practices within the league. What are you hearing that you can kind of, if anything, that you can share with us about how wide and far this tangle web that the NFL weaves uh, may stretch and, and who uh, may be ensnared in it? Okay, so Wednesday, 1130 a.m., looking at a text message conversation with someone who would know. And I said, he said, I hear Jeff Pash is going down. This is Wednesday, 1130 a.m. I said, I said, you think Pash was the leak? I thought that's what he was, he was, he was uh, aiming at, that Jeff Pash was the leak. I said, well, he certainly had as- access. He said, no, he has some bad texts, I heard. Now, mm. could he be conflating texts with emails? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Yeah. Like, I mean, it could, you know, it could yeah. be emails, could be texts. Um, but in, in, the, in the text that have followed with this thing, you know, this individual says, look, this thing goes deep. Um, he, mm. you know, he suggested last night, he sent me some of the stuff that has gotten out there. He says, this is just starting to fall apart. I, it's someone who, you know, he's not going to give anything up, but he's, he's adamant that this is just the beginning of this and that it's, it's going to jeopardize the ownership of the Washington Redskins. It's going to, excuse me, the Washington football team. Mm-hmm. Good Lord. I can't believe that just came out of my mouth. I, I know. Um, We're old. Yeah. We're old. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to keep happening. Um, yeah. The Washington football franchise, I think, you know, he believes that, that the, the ownership of, of Daniel Snyder could potentially once again get called into question if information keeps coming out in this whole situation. And I asked someone, um, I asked an executive who's been around the block for a long time and I, about the Washington football team investigation. I said, why, why did this not, why did it go the way it did with the oral reports and nothing was released and it's been so quiet and, and, I, and their suggestion to me was, you have a situation where both sides have nukes. Dan Snyder's got nukes on the league. The league's got nukes on Dan Snyder, and they're sitting there staring at each other and going, mm. "Well, we're gonna we're gonna both destroy each other if we if we do this." So this is how we're gonna have to get through this. There's going to be some, and and this is funny because you bring up the whole um, Bruce Allen BS um, email about the about the fifteen thousand dollar fine. Dan Snyder got fined ten million dollars. But really what he paid for was $10 million worth of secrecy because nothing was supposed mm-hmm. to get out. Write your $10 million check. Small price. A, a, I would make sure he paid that money now. I would probably double check to make sure that, that there wasn't a phone call that occurred yeah. later or an email that occurred later to make sure yeah. that the money got paid. And B, now I understand how maybe that, that financial amount was come to. Now I, I can see yeah. in my mind how a conversation would happen like, Okay, here's the deal. You're gonna get fined here, and we're gonna move on. But you know, just be. This is this is you're gonna. This is the penalty. This is the speed right. ticket you're gonna have to pay. And I know the music's playing. We're gonna. Well, I, I'm just gonna add to what we're he's gonna saying. Move to break. The music's playing. Go ahead. Yeah, we're gonna go to break. Hang around, Charles. I'm just gonna say this mm-hmm. though. For those who don't know, the owners had the right to push out Daniel Snyder at the time. They all declined to do it, and now you understand yeah. why nobody really stepped forward and said, "I want him out." Because a lot of people have secrets. A lot of people got dirt yeah, on them. Exactly. Er- everybody got secrets. Everybody, everybody, everybody got secrets. <laughs> hey, thanks for watching Brother from Another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time on Peacock. Appreciate you.